Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will continue with the ETL incremental data load. In the previous video, we discussed various incremental data load approaches such as source change detection, destination change comparison, and change data capture. We implemented the destination change comparison in that session. Today we will cover the source change detection. In the source change detection design pattern, we use two key fields, modified at and created at datetime fields to detect the changes. We pull the data into the ETL pipeline that is inserted and are changed since the last ETL run. We will set up few tables in our source system, which is SQL Server, and we will set up a customer and a fact transaction table. We will store customer detail in the customer table and transaction relating to a customer in the fact transaction table. Let's go ahead and insert few records in these tables. On the target side in Postgres, we will create an ETL schema and provide necessary permission to the ETL user that we have created in the first video of this series. In this schema, we create a table that stores the ETL logs. The purpose of this table is to store the ETL execution date along with table name and few other details. We provide necessary permission on this table along with a sequence that gets created by the serial object that serves as the primary key of this table. Whenever our ETL scripts run, it will get the last ETL run date and we supply this run date to the WHERE clause against created at and modified at dates. Make sure to give permission to the user that will run your ETL script on this schema. I will give ETL user permissions on the ETL schema. All SQL scripts are available on GitHub. Link is in the description below. Let's go ahead and build a query in SQL Server against the customer table. In the WHERE clause, we filter on both created at and modified at fields from this table. To pick up new and change records, we will use the R clause between the two filters. This will give us the new and change records from this table. We can follow this pattern for all other tables as well. Let's utilize the code from the previous ETL pipeline session to define variables along with database details and establish database connection in Jupyter Notebook. To insert ETL logs in the ETL schema, we create a function. This function takes log ID, table name, row count, status, and error message if any. We built a dictionary with this information and add dates with current date time. To insert this information into the database, we convert it to a data frame and with the help of toSQL function, we persist this data to the database. Let's define another function to get the last ETL run date from this table by table name. We query the log table where table name equals the provided table name and select the max last extract date time value. If there is no match, then we set the date time to 1900. This function returns the last extract date time value. We use the customer table from AdventureWorks database that we set up earlier. We read the data into a data frame with pandas and SQL with filters on created add and modified add fields. And to the filter condition, we provide the last extract date time. To insert and update data, we create an upsert function. We check if the last extract date time value is 1900. And if this condition is true, then we load all the data from the source to destination. Also, we insert a row into the ETL log table with the current timestamp. Now, both of our environments are in sync. And in the else clause, we built a new function that would upsert rows in the target table. At the moment, we can load the same data again in the customer table without any issue. And this will create problems down the road. We will end up with two records for the same customer. To avoid this issue and to use the insert on conflict function in Postgres, we add a unique constraint on the table. So I have my PG admin open. I'll execute this code to add a unique constraint on customer table. Now we can handle new and modified records in one shot. 
let's upsert. We utilize a similar function as the last time. This function takes a data frame with modified records, a table name, and the primary key of the table. We store the data frame in a temporary table and build a dynamic SQL insert on conflict statement. We insert the rows in the target table and if the customer ID already exists, then on conflict, we update the existing row with incoming data. If you need more information on insert on conflict, I'll leave the link of the Postgres tutorial in the description below. Let's insert few more records in our source table in SQL Server. So I'll go ahead and insert these two rows in the source table and as well as I'll update the customer ID 3 and set the customer type to corporate. I'll go ahead and execute these scripts to insert and update rows. We run the source query again in the Jupyter Notebook to pull changes from the source system. This gives us the new records and the modified records only. Now we call the upsert function with a data frame along with a table name and the key column. Function inserts and updates the table rows with the new data from the source. We have successfully upsert the target table. This is how we can use the source change detection in Python ETL pipeline. I hope you enjoyed the session. This is all for now. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.